Hello, it's Mike Lochran again, and welcome back to our conversation on context-sensitive halftime. In this video, we'll talk about the clinical utility. In the last video, we ended with this kind of paragraph out of Katsung, where it says, the context-sensitive halftime of propofol is brief even after a prolonged infusion, and therefore, recovery occurs relatively promptly. So let's, let's look at the, that a little bit. So we're specifically going to look at recovery and and whether it's true that after a prolonged infusion their recovery is prompt. So when we talk about recovery in, in anesthesia and specifically propofol, we're usually talking about being awake. So that's what we'll use as our pharmacodynamic endpoint, being awake. And if we go back to this, if we go back to this graph that we looked at propofol infusion, where we said that the contact sensitive half time was dose independent. Let's look at that, and, but let's look at a different endpoint than a 50% reduction in plasma concentration. Let's look at the time it takes to get to a plasma concentration when you're awake. So this red bar, that represents uh, 1.6 mics per mil, and that is a plasma concentration that is associated with being awake. Now there's some variability in this, but this is a fairly accepted uh, plasma concentration for being awake. So if we look at 100, the dose of 100 mics per kilo per minute, the context sense of halftime was 8 minutes and the time to recovery was 11. So pretty similar. But at 150 mics, that recovery time now becomes 35 minutes. And if we're up at 200 mics per kilo per minute, that recovery time is 50 minutes. So it's very much dose dependent to a to a dynamic endpoint like being awake or recovery. And we can make a big table of this, looking at everything, doing simulations and looking at everything from 75 mics to 200 mics and durations of infusion up to eight hours. Now in this case, I used an effect site concentration to be awake. And again, there's some variability in the, in the literature about this, but two mics per mil is, a, is an acceptable effect site concentration for being awake. And when we do this, we see that we have an increase in time to be awake over time, but it's very much dose dependent. So that this quick recovery goes away with increased doses and increased duration. This is the same data, but graphed differently. So instead of a table, it's a graph. And we also have the, in the addition of this red line, and that red line is the context sensitive half time. So we can see that at these lower concentrations, we do have a kind of a, a low slope or a f kind of a flat slope to these, to these lower concentrations, and they kind of are similar to the context sensitive half time. But as we increase dose, so does our increase of our slope with duration. So again, at these much higher doses and much longer infusions, the context sensitive half time does not really reflect the time it takes to to be awake or recovery. So how about, let's look at something like fentanyl. So if we look at the context sensitive half time graph, it would seem that fentanyl would be just about a, one of the most terrible things that you could do for a prolonged infusion. But let, let's take a look at that. So in this case, we're gonna look at a six hour infusion at two mics per kilo per hour. And if we do that, that's this black line at the end of six hours we're at like 2.2 or nanograms per mil and even though we have this really long context sensitive half time we have still have some fairly quick distribution and I can't remember exactly but I think the wake up here or the time till when they would be breathing is um, like three or four minutes but we do have this prolonged you know time to drop in to drop in half and in this case, that's beneficial because it keeps them in this range of where they'll get analgesic benefit from the, from the fentanyl. So it's true that the, it, the time after a long infusion is increased to drop in half, but if your infusion is targeted to a dynamic endpoint that you're happy with in that they'll breathe, then that prolonged context sensitive half time may be beneficial. And let's look at that in contrast to say something like where we give a bolus in the beginning for induction and then we don't really give any during maintenance. 
and we're going to titrate in some during the last half hour of the case so that they'll have some analgesia when they wake up. And in this case, we gave 100 mics uh, at induction and 150 mics in the last half hour in divided doses, 75 mics each. And this, this, and this simulation is done in a 40-year-old, 70-kilo male, stereotypical person. Now, if you see, we our induction, the 100 mics we give on induction, drops below analgesic concentration relatively quickly and really gets down to almost nothing by 90 minutes or two hours. So the same kind of simulation would really look the same whether we did it at, you know, dosed again at 90 minutes or up here at six hours. What you see is, is that we, we get these quick peaks, but because it's short and we haven't given anything else, we get a lot of distribution and we quickly actually re drop below minimum analgesic concentration and in this case almost at the end of, by the end of the case at six hours we're, we're when we're waking up we're already down below minimum analgesic concentrations so I guess the take-home message here is that the context sensitive half time whether being short or long really is is relative it depends on what your goals are well you might also ask well what's what about if we just don't want to run an infusion, but we want to give intermittent boluses throughout the case. So in that case, this is the same amount of opioid instead of fentanyl, two mics per kilo per hour or one mic per kilo every half hour. And you really get the same basic thing that you get with the infusion, although you get much higher peaks and much, and you get lower. So you get a lot more variability, but at the end, you have that same kind of prolonged slow drop, but if it's if it's targeted to a concentration where they'll breathe but give them analgesia, it may be it's maybe beneficial. So what about the clinical relevance of contact sensitive halftime? So this is really talking about propofol, but if you run an infusion for your maintenance that leads to a drug concentration that is twice the threshold for recovery, and then a 50% decrease in blood concentration is associated with the dis uh, dissipation of effect so that they'll wake up and then in those cases contact sensitive half time is very relevant but if you're running it five times higher and then that 50 percent drop does not bring you into a range that a clinically relevant pharmacodynamic range then it's not relevant at all so if we look at this if we can keep our propofol dose down low and keep it then the contact sensitive half time is relevant. So what we really need to do is develop strategies to keep that dose down. And um, kind of a frequent or common way to do this is by the addition of remifentanil. And so I guess the real take home message is, is that contact sensitive half time is an, is an important concept, but it doesn't mean that no matter how high you run the dose for how long that they'll wake up quickly. So the dose does matter and you should develop strategies to kind of run that, keep that dose low if you're going to run it for a long periods of time. Or if you run it higher that you need to shut it off earlier. I hope you, I hope this helps and I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, thank you for listening. Bye.